Hi, and welcome to the Natural Bliss Podcast for a Better Quality of Life. This is a special podcast as it's I'm not recording on Wednesday, it's Tuesday. So you're going to want to go over to MajesticTarot.com and click on, click on that shop button and go ahead and get you some amazing skincare products. And don't forget to get yourself some Shungite for protection against the electromagnetic field. Now go on. You can hit the pause button. Just go, 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 go. Okay, so my special guest I have with me today is Ginny Trask. She was born into a family of entrepreneurs. Business is simply second nature to Ginny. She began her first business at the age of 16 and never stopped. She has owned and grown numerous small businesses from incubation and to the multi-millions and continues to help other small business owners optimize their ventures in travel, retail, and restaurant enterprises. She is passionate about helping businesses to thrive and not just survive. Jeannie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Joyce. I love what you guys are all about. And uh, I love what you're doing here in the world with your podcast. And I love what you're doing. So you've got got something special planned for this month, don't you? Yeah. So we're up to some pretty cool stuff over here. Um, You know, growing up, um, I lived basically in the forest. And I didn't realize until actually recently, I was like, you know, last month old when I figured out that I, that the, this is what really had helped me to um, maintain my level head and my sense of self and my calm in the storm that was my childhood. I had a very uh, dramatic childhood. I, it wasn't as traumatic as some people, but you know, I did have a, a mother that was a drug addict and I had a lot of uncertainty and instability in my childhood, but I lived in the forest. And so I could go out into the forest anytime. <laughs> Come on. see the forest and connect to themselves. So did you go and play with the fairies too? Yes, ex- yes, totally. When I, thank you for saying that. When I was a kid, I totally did, right? I imagined that I was in the forest with the fairies and, and I would, um, yeah, and I was like talking to the trees. I mean, it was like a very Snow White moment, like, right? I'm talking to the trees and the birds and the animals. And really, I, I really felt like I was in fairyland. And I would, um, I was young and I would look for things that were in my herbalism book and try to find them in the forest. And it was, yeah, that, that was exactly what I did. So you played with the fairies too, as a child, I take it, Joyce. No, I didn't, but I did, um, cause I grew up in the city. Ah. So I didn't have the woods close to me, but what I used to do is I would take a bucket of water and I would put dandelions in it and rocks in it and grass and I would drink it. Little did I know <laughs> that this is actually a thing. So now in my grown up <laughs> life that I've learned more about doing this stuff, I do do that. <laughs> That's so fantastic. So really, right. How often, I mean, you know, I think we have to take take ourselves back to ourselves. Those child, that child self actually knew a lot, right? right? Your child self actually was, was doing exactly what you are doing now as an adult, right? Now as an adult, you're bringing those properties of the plants and the rocks to people and tell, I mean, and a lot of it is they can consume it, right? They can put it in their body and you are, you're yeah. making potions and things with the, you know, with these natural ingredients and your child self knew it knew mm-hmm. that truth. It knew the truth that there was power in the dandelions and there was power in the rocks and there was power in putting them together and, and using them with your body. And so, yeah. And, you know, and it's horrible too, because here in Louisiana, I, I never see any dandelions and they're so good for you. And when I lived in 
Chicago, it was the adults would actually send the children out to pull the dandy, to, to pull the dandelions and throw them away. They were weeds, they were bad, they were horrible. And I'm like, my inner child is like screaming right now, being like, oh, oh what did we do? What do we do? You know, so you have something amazing coming up that pertains to the forest in the woods. You want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for actually letting me come on and, and talk about this with, with your folks. So I am hosting my first ever forest new year meditation retreat. So now you might be asking, but the new year was a couple, like a week ago, right? Or 10 days ago, whatever, 11 days ago. Um, so, um, I study human design and you've got a guest coming up that also talks about human design, right? Have you had that guest yet? No, I was supposed to have them last Wednesday, but I was doing that master class I told you about. So unfortunately, and I, I ended up canceling it. So now he's coming on, I, I believe the first Wednesday in February. Okay. Fantastic. So you guys have that support too as well. So, um, in human design, human design combines um, astrology, the I Ching, the um, Kabbalah uh, from Judaism, the chakra system, and it uh, and quantum mechanics. So it combines all of those together. And the in human design, we believe that we have these things called gates, right? Um, body and the gates are energy centers. And the forty first gate in your body represents, um, it represents sort of the, it is the new, it's the beginning of the genetic sequence. It's the beginning of a new human experience. And the sun comes into the gate early morning on the 22nd for us in the, in the U S in Europe, it's happening on late night on the 21st. So we are going to gather folks together in, in the forest. I own uh, 30 acres of private forest in South Texas. And so we are going to have folks come out. We're going to do meditation first on January 21st. We're going to meditate on what did we learn last year? We're going to look at, you know, what do we want to let go of, right? Um, kind of closing that chapter, closing, closing the door on 2021. And then on the 22nd, we are going to meditate and focus on that new energy, the energy of beginning a new experience in our bodies. Um, and so really it is all about the body. And I wanted us to be able to be out in the trees and, and soaking up all the amazing uh, benefits of being in the forest. So uh, folks will actually have a chance to go out and pick a spot uh, out in the forest that can be their spot. Camping, everyone in a location with a bathroom and a shower and things like that. Um, but they will be tents. It will be rustic. It will be rustic. I'm just saying, rustic, sleeping in a tent <laughs> on the ground. Be like over in a field, right? It, running water though. We will have running water. Uh, we will have um, a running toilet and, and a shower for people. But you'll also have spots. You can go out and pick your own meditation spot. We will have... Um, someone there to speak about human design, uh, but we will also have uh, time to meditate on your own. And then also a few group meditations. If people want to join any part of it that you want to be a part of, you can be a part of any part of it that you're just like, Nope, want to do that by myself and commune with the fairies. That's fine. Um, it's a very at will uh, experience. So do people have to bring their own tents and sleeping bags? We will provide that for people. Um, they, they can rent them from us. If they don't have them on their own, they can, they can rent uh, tents and sleeping bags and things from us. Um, we have all that equipment that they might need and it does include meals as well. So, um, breakfast, I'm sorry, a dinner, a lunch and a breakfast are all included in the price. So how do the people get there? Do they, is there a meetup place? Cause I know we went to a mine to go rock hounding and we had to meet the guy at, at McDonald's and then he drove us to the mine. So I, I'm just wondering, does it work something like that or how do, how, how do people get there? Yeah. So we do have a central location in Houston that people can meet at and park their cars and we will give them a ride. Um, so we can, uh, it's, it's actually, um, pretty central. It's right down by NRG stadium in, in Houston. If anybody knows where that is, I'm sorry, not NRG, um, 
BVA Stadium, the soccer stadium, right by downtown Houston. A location there, they can park their cars and arrive out to the property. It's about, it's about an hour and, and a half, hour and 45 minutes from Houston uh, out to the property. It's near the Big Thicket National Preserve. If people would like to meet us there, they can certainly drive themselves and meet us there as well. So either or. And if people want more information, where should they go? So I think the easiest thing to do um, is they can text actually the word forest to 26786 and that will shoot them over the link to the event. So that's the word forest, F-O-R-E-S-T to two seven eight will uh, shoot them the, the link to the eventbrite um, and also connect them to me via email in case they have questions and i will also be putting the link in the description so you're going to want to go on there and click on that link and go check check out jenny's event and you have big plans in store for this 30 acres that you have I do. I have some really big plans. We are going to be hosting a, a series of events there throughout the course of the next year. We are really getting close to getting some really unique features. Um, if anybody out there has bubbles in Terralingua, we are acquiring some bubbles. And soon you will actually be able to come out and meditate in the bubbles. The neat thing about meditating in a bubble, uh, these are vinyl bubbles. They have constant airflow that's flowing through them to keep them inflated. Uh, they're open, uh, they're clear and open to the, the sky. Uh, and so you can see the trees and see all of that around you, but you don't have to be out in it, right? So if it's raining or if there are mosquitoes, which we're in South Texas, there, there can be mosquitoes, even in the winter. Um, we, uh, we basically, you know, you're, you can be in that space and not have to deal with that. But the sound inside of bubble is amazing. So we want to use it for sound healings, for um, mm -hmm. drum circles, for chanting, for things like that, uh, because the sound inside the bubble is just absolutely amazing, the way the sound rotates around. So will people be able to sleep inside the bubbles or are they just for meditation purposes? They will be able to sleep inside the bubbles. Um, so we, now, now guys, for those of you listening, we don't have these yet. Uh, we're getting them in about the next six months. We're getting them installed. Oh, they have cool. ordered from France. <laughs> so wow. uh, we have to wait for them to come. But, uh, but yeah, we will have those up in, in the next, uh, you know, uh, several months. And we're very excited that, yeah, you'll be able to sleep in them. And then we'll also have an option to just you know, uh, we'll have some options on occasion for people to come and camp and and uh, and do like larger events where we're actually using the bubbles more for the event space. Nice. So are you going to have different sizes to where you would have like one where everybody can gather to meditate together? Yes. So we have um, different size bubbles. So there'll be larger bubbles, smaller bubbles, and then uh, the sleeping bubbles will actually be, um, they'll be configured where they have a bathroom, a living room and a sleeping area. Some of them will have all three of those things. Uh, some of them will be like a studio size where it's just the bathroom. Um, and then we have a central, we'll have a central kitchen that people can use to cook uh, because cooking inside of the bubble, it just doesn't sound like a very great idea for me. I, I, I'm sure it's fine, but there's just something about people cooking inside of a vinyl bubble that just seems like not a great wrong. idea. <laughs> yeah, it just seems wrong. Yeah. So going back to the event, the other interesting thing about the dates that you've chosen is at the beginning of the week, I'm not sure if it's Sunday or Monday because your event starts on a Friday, but it's the full, it's the new moon, which is a time for new beginnings. Right. So this whole thing of new beginnings, and then you're still going to have that energy from the new moon. Yeah. Plus you've got two, two, two mixed yep. in there yeah so, that's right so. that's right yeah and and the other thing that i think yeah so i love that yeah you've got the two 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 because it's on the um because it's on the 22nd the other thing is mercury is going to be in retrograde and what's interesting about mercury being in retrograde when you're doing this is that is really a great time to turn within so when mercury is in retrograde it's not for us to communicate outwardly it's for us to reflect inward and, and that's why you know, Mercury often messes 
our communication and things like that is because Mercury retrograde is actually time for us to turn in and listen to ourselves and really tune into what, um, you know, spirit is trying to tell us what our bodies are trying to tell us. Uh, so, so it's an interesting uh, time because I at first had somebody say, oh no, you don't want to do your, your retreat, then Mercury is going to be in retrograde. And then they went, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's the best time because it really is a time of reflection. What we want people to get out of the retreat is really an opportunity to reflect, an opportunity to go within, to get quiet, to get still, to listen to that inner truth. Well, I'm thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me, I think about it too is doing it with other people. You have that sense of community, plus you have other people's energy, you know, being outside, you have the negative ions, <clears throat> which are very, very beneficial for us. And the energy from the trees and the plants. And it's just, I would love to go. I was hoping to go, but unfortunately I don't drive the interstate. And it's like, just looking at all the other modes of transportation was like insane. So I found a friend who was willing to go and then she realized, hey, too much going on. So, but we are definitely going, going to be at the next one or one of them. <laughs> we will be at one of them. Yeah, I, I definitely will be doing more like this one. Um, I'm looking to probably do another one in April uh, that'll be like this, but this is the only one that is at the beginning of the year. Right. And so if you're really wanting to start the year off uh, mm -hmm. on the right foot and really take some reflective time, you know, before the new year, um, this is really the only one that does that. The others will be focused on different things because of the timing. So always the timing will be centered around some um, significant event um, to involve you, know, you and I were chatting the other day about doing things involving the lunar calendar. So for right. anybody out there that does know human design, I'm a reflector. Reflectors are ruled by the moon, uh, by the lunar cycles. Um, so all the other human design types are ruled by the solar cycles. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm ruled by the lunar cycles. So I really do pay attention to that. And I love to do things that are also in sync with the lunar cycle. Like you said, in this event, we do have that lunar cycle going on too, which is perfect timing. Um, it's really perfect timing um for this as well so you know uh because you were explaining a lot of folks they just focus on like the moon or the new moon but that energy mm -hmm. of the the full moon and the energy of the new moon they th that energy sticks around right it sticks around right. after the new moon it sticks around after the full moon and then coming up to the full moon or coming up to the new moon there's energy there for several days before um it reaches that full cycle so don't think guys that it's only about the full moon or the new moon there's mm -hmm. a lot happening on either side of those of those cycles Right, and then you have the winning moon and the waxing moon, which have their their own thing that's going on. And I notice most people, especially when it comes to like drumming circles, is a total focus on the full moon, which confuses me because the new moon is all about new beginnings. So why not focus always on the new beginnings and do, doing something new and exciting rather than the full moon, but we're all different. I, I agree with you though on the drumming. So it's that's one of the big things that I want to have that I'm going to be having out at the at the property um, in the coming you know months. And I was also thinking full moon, but I'm glad that you've said this because you're right. The energy of drumming is is it's so energizing. If anybody has ever anybody out there has been in a drum circle, you know it's so energizing. And how neat would that be? I really agree with you. Energy drumming is actually maybe a little more appropriate for the new moon and the new beginnings because it's such an energizing activity. I've never been a part of one. We do have here, it's about 45 minutes away, a woman's center where they do it, but they're doing it at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And not only when I drive on the interstate, I can't drive at night because the headlights bother my eyes. Yeah. So, you know what, I should ask Laura if she'll go with me. There you go. Ask a friend, phone a friend. Yeah, it's really, um, you know, uh, I've been to several, I've been to several drum circles. I've led drum circles. I really, I love the energy of it. Uh, a lot of times when you leave a drum circle, you'll just be vibrating, right? Um, so we will probably actually uh, in, at this event in January, have some drums out there. I know 
we might, we have some secret things that are going to be happening that I don't want to tell everybody about, but uh, there definitely will be music involved. Let me just put it that way. It'll definitely nice. be, there'll definitely be some music involved. Uh, music is really important to me. And I think it's really important uh, as a catharsis as well. I think it's important to people in terms of letting go, in terms of shifting their energy. Music can really shift your energy. So it's a part of everything that I do. It also st stimulates the vagus nerve system, which is very important. I that. Oh, speaking of stimulating the vagus nerve, um, actually, we're going to be using a breathing technique um, at Ooh. the retreat that stimulates the vagus nerve. So there's a there's a type of breathing that we do in the meditation that I use um, that stimulates the vagus nerve. So we'll also be doing that there. So lots of vagus nerve stimulation, guys. <laughs> Yay! And you know, and all these activities too. You know, the one of the th beneficial things about meditation is that also stimulates the vagus nerve system. You're raising your vibrational frequency and then your body's creating hormones and neurotransmitters that you need for good, good health. So, I mean, all the way around, it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. Yeah. We're guys, we're just packing you full of all kinds of stuff at this, at this event. You're going to be, we're going to be just really, you're going to come away from this event feeling just so energized. Um, you know, every time that I take folks out there, because I do also do this privately for people. So um, for my coaching clients or for people who um, want to do a private session out in the forest, I will take them out there um, privately. And that I've been doing for a while. I will go out um, either a day trip or go out and stay the night and, you know, meditate overnight. And, um, you don't have to meditate all night long, just, <laughs> just that we're night. Um, but yeah, it's a really, uh, every time people come away with big shifts, every time that we've, I've ever done this with somebody, they come away with a huge shift in what's been going on for them. Um, because this is the place that I think that that's made, you know, it's all about really being, being still enough and being in nature in order to reconnect to yourself. It's all about the reconnection. I, I totally agree. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful event. Thank I'm you. Excited. I'm so excited. I'm so sad you're not going to be there. I wanted you to be there so badly, but I, 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 I know I how did. it is. I didn't. I was, I was looking, I was, I was trying my best looking at, I looked at the look at flying. I looked at taking a, the, you mentioned the train. I looked at the bus and it was just like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it happens sometimes, right? It, everything happens in, in the timing that it's supposed to. So I, I'm sure that we'll, you'll get out to another one sometime soon. And um, also hope to see you at, uh, at our speakers retreat in Dallas at the end uh, in, in February, but we can talk about that offline. <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, yeah, I saw that. And I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, I'm just, I, I'm making some shifts right now. We could talk about that later, but yeah. Um, you know, and it would be a good time for me to be there because I am in the midst of making shifts. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and that's the thing, too, is that when you meditate and when you're out there, you don't have any distractions. Yeah. It's just you and the earth. Yeah. And I can actually really use that right now because yeah. I've just got so much going on that's got that monkey brain going. I just won't be quiet. You know, yeah, so. it happens. And you know, you know, the crazy thing is the more, I feel like the more stressed we are, the more the monkey brain takes over, the closer that we get to make a shift, the more that the monkey brain takes over because it's trying to like pull us back and keep us where we were, right? Because we want to maintain, you know, the status, our ego wants to maintain the status quo. You know, and so that monkey brain gets louder and louder. And yeah, and going out to the forest is a great way to silence the, mon the monkey brain um, and just breathe in the trees and breathe in, you know, we have so many little things that I notice. like every time, every single time I set foot out in the forest, I notice something is different than the last mm -hmm. time. So, you know, uh, it could be that there's a lot of moss, right? And there's like all this little soft green moss every or sometimes it, the, there are, the trees are starting to bud out and you notice the little buds or, you know, sometimes the trees are falling and you can feel that energy of like, of letting go. Right. Um, so there's, it's just, there's always something, there's always a gift that the forest has to give us. So do you get the changing of the colors of the leaves in the fall? 
We get some, some change and some don't um, because we're in South Texas. So we have, we have, it's not like you get it up in like the North, uh, in like the Northeast where you get a lot right. of changing of colors, um, but we get some, yeah, we get some and there's certainly some leaves on the ground for sure. Um, we have pine trees up there. Um, also in that region, for whatever strange reason, we don't have any cypress trees. Everyone else has cypress trees, but me. I'm the only person up there that doesn't have cypress trees. I don't know why I don't have any cypress trees. Everyone else has them, but the cypress trees do change. And so if people wanted to see that, we could also look at, go find some places where there are cypress trees. Um, I was just curious because you're in Texas and I'm in Louisiana. And I know here it's like green, brown, that's it. <laughs> Green and brown, and that's it. Yeah, we have a couple types of trees that change. The cypress trees up here in this area do often change. They, they do go through a color change. Um, and we do different trees on the property that go through a color change. But yeah, it's not all of them. It's not like you get in Vermont or anything where you, you have that beautiful um, fall color happening. Right. Fall is my favorite time of the year. I love crunching through the leaves. That, that yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's a one. That's a wonderful feeling. I do too. I love fall. And you know, I was, I did a talk on this a while back about, or no, yeah, I did a, I did a, I posted on Facebook, you know, in olden times in the winter, it really would be a time of rest for people. It right. would be time that they would rent because there wasn't anything to do. It was cold, all the crops harvested right? This is before the industrial revolution, right? It, all the crops would have been harvested. There wasn't anything to do except to sit around and relax a little bit and spend time with your family and cook what the food you had put away. And that was it. And so there was a lot, there was more downtime and, and winter really was a time for people to rest and reflect. And I said, you know, if I had only taken that time in my business, because I never did. Um, so, you know, as you read my bio, I have grown, um, I have owned or operated five multi-million dollar companies. The last company, my, my most successful, right? My travel company was my most successful company in terms of just gross revenue. But had I really had, had I taken the time, had I ever just slowed down and taken the time to reflect, I would have done things so differently. I would have had a more balanced life. And I probably actually would have made the change that I've just made sooner. Um, because for me, I realized that I had actually built a toxic business. I had built a business that what really was toxic for me. Um, it was all, all the parts of my personality that are the hardest for me to, to, you know, that I'm, that are going to be my lifelong changes, the things that I'm going to have to work on for the rest of my life, like having boundaries, right? I have, I have weak boundaries. I have, uh, I have a hard time saying no, I have, I'm a people pleaser, mm -hmm. right? And I'm a perfectionist. So all three of those things in the travel business, you basically get paid to never say no. You get paid to give people everything that they want. And they won't take no, and they, they, in some, in my case, I was doing a lot of, I was doing luxury travel. They won't take no for an answer. They know that there's a price. There's a price at which they can pay to have what they want. Right. So I was dealing with that. And, and so I was dealing with those things on a daily basis. And so my receiving, right. The energetic receiving of money was wrapped up in me literally compromising my boundaries and my, and then my perfectionism was like off the hook because nothing's ever perfect in travel. Like things happen, right? It's never perfect. It's okay. Yeah. But for a perfectionist, I was like, no, no, it's not okay. So had I had time, had I ever taken a winter, right? Had I ever taken a time to really slow down? And if had I, back then, had I gone out into the forest and taken that time to reflect and to sit and to listen to myself, I probably would have changed my business a lot sooner. You mean th what you're doing or changed the, the travel business that you had and been operating it differently? Yeah, I think it would have changed the travel business that I had. I mean, now I've gotten there, right? Now I've changed it. Um, now I still work with a handful of clients in that business um, and, and, it's, and it's free and it's easy and it's like the, 
what I do now in that business is different than what I did before. And now I'm so much more focused on, you know, I'm doing these forest retreats. I'm doing these, you know, speak retreats. I, I do retreats now, but it's different. There's a different energy around it. Um, I don't feel the need in those to people, please. Right. I don't feel the need for perfection because, um, there's perfection and the imperfection and there's, you know, if, if things don't go perfectly in those, it, it's okay, uh, in this realm. So, yeah, I think had I taken time to, to rest and reflect, I would have done things differently in that business a long time ago. I know I, I'm a per perfectionist too, but I've, I've, I've learned to let it go. I've learned that it's okay to not be perfect, that things don't have to be perfect. I was talking with my son about this the other day and I wire wrapped jewelry and I have pieces that I wired wrapped and I'm not happy with the way they came out. So I've never put them up for sale. Mm. And I had other people who also make jewelry be like, oh no, they're fine. Put it out, put it out. And I'm like, no, I, I'm not happy with it. You know, yeah. so it's just like, yeah. so, so this is a reach. This is something too, that if you're an entrepreneur, you need to think, listen to what Jenny's saying and think about how stressed you might be at this point in time in your business or how you need to let go and tend to yourself, give yourself a little self-care. It's what a day and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're going to come in uh, Friday night, the 21st, we're, you know, people can start arriving as early as two as noon. We're hoping that people we, will be in by three because we'd like to kind of get started. We want to give everybody an orientation of the property, you know, let you pick your little spot that you're going to have that it'll be secluded. You can get away from everybody and, and pick a little secluded spot to go to. And then um, we'll do some group meditating. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what we're letting, you know, if people want to talk about what they're letting go of or their reflection they certainly if people want to interact they certainly can it's not a silent retreat but if you want to be silent you can go off and do that um and then yeah the next day uh people can leave um as you know uh, as i mean as early as they want to but we will be doing some meditation for the new year in the morning uh but i expect everyone will, lunch will be served at noon and then I, I figure folks will take off after that so everyone will probably be done by 2 p.m the next day so just a full 24-hour cycle really you know and, and that'll be it. So it's just one day, right? It's one day that, you know, that I ask people to take, to, to set it all aside, set it all aside and set yourself down on a tree stump somewhere and let the trees talk to you. Let that little child self that knew, that knew the truth, let that little child self that knew the truth come out and play and, and uh, bring that truth into your life today. I love that. I love that. So are you going to do the thing where you write down what you're letting go on a piece of paper and then burn it? <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. And we'll definitely have a fire. Um, we don't, we don't have any burn bands down here in Texas where we got lots of water. So it, it rains like crazy down here. So we're, we're fine. We have a, we, we actually have a really neat, really neat fireplace. We'll probably also do like a bonfire out in the field. Uh, we have a stargazing meadow, but uh, we have a really neat old, 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 old chimney from the existing house that used to be on the property. And oh, cool. uh, yeah, so we'll definitely do that. We can write down what, you know, what you're letting go of. We can burn that. Um, whatever kind of little rituals people would like to do, we welcome them to do that. And whatever we can do to help you to complete your ritual, we're, we're more than happy to, to help with it. It sounds like it's going to be a really great time. And once again, I want, I do want to encourage being an entrepreneur myself and after you her Ginny's story about what she went through with the business. I think that, you know, she, we all need to take that time to go ahead and reflect on where we are and what, what you know, what path we're on and just take some self care. So is there anything else that they need to know? Um, you know, it's all pretty much there in the Eventbrite link, but you know, just know it is rustic, right? Uh, we are in the woods. Um, in the woods, there are spiders and bugs and snakes and all kinds of things. Uh, Texas has every poisonous snake in North America, pretty much, except for one. Um, so all that's there. Um, most of those things are more afraid of you than you are of them. Um, you know, we do also have deer. Um, we see evidence of wild hogs, but we've never seen any wild hogs. We, we see their evidence. We see where they 
looks like they must have come out and rooted around, uh, but we haven't ever had uh, seen them while we've been out there. Uh, there is a pond. Uh, it's covered in duckweed, which Joyce and I looked up duckweed, and there's actually some good properties. You guys can come harvest some duckweed off the pond because yeah. there's a lot of it. And uh, but yeah, and so there's some water out there. You know, you guys can go sit by the pond and reflect. Um, but yeah, it's just rustic, and that's just to know if you've never slept in a tent before, if you're not comfortable with that, you know, this. This can be your first time. At least it's only one night. Um, we don't exactly know what the weather will be. Of course, it could be rainy. It could be it could be sunny. It could be hot or it could be cold. Right now, it's cold here. It's um, forty degrees. It could be forty degrees or it literally could be eighty-five degrees. You just don't know in South Texas. So um, we'll know, of course, a little closer. We recommend that people bring layers. But um, you know, really, we just ask that you come ready to set your world aside for a moment, to set all the programming that everyone's placed on you, to set mm -hmm. all, the, all the shoulds, uh, all the should haves and could haves and would haves and all those things, set all that aside and just take a moment to connect to yourself and to connect with that inner truth that is, that is in there. And I just, I really believe that the forest brings it out. It sounds like it's gonna be a wonderful time. Now you, and I want to be there even more. I know, I know. I'm just glad that you're going to do more of them and that I will have that that opportunity to come and join you. And, and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For the event anyway. Yeah, but. absolutely. And for anybody that does you know, text in for, you know, forest to 26786, they will get um, also a link, uh, to, you know, to this event. But they'll also just get informed of just the future ones we do. We're not going to send you anything else. Just, just these particular events you'll get the information for. So is there anything else you want to leave to the listening audience with before we, you, we go? Um, I guess I just want to say that um, I hope that this year is everything that you need it to be, everything that you want it to be, and I hope that even if you can't come to my event, that you find some time to get out into a forest somewhere, get out into nature, put your feet in the dirt, you know, your toes in the sand, and really take a moment to connect. And, and because connecting with nature really does connect you with your truth. And I hope that you guys all have an opportunity to do that in the coming year. Well, thank you, Ginny, so much for being with me today. I appreciate you taking that, the time. I know you have a really good, busy schedule. So thank you to the listeners for listening. And remember, keep on shining your light.